Okay, gang, let's talk about the action on GameStop, what's going on Wall Street, what happened with Robinhood. What's all this uh, chaos about? Okay. Now, before we get an appreciation of what's really going on, we have to understand what the stock market is about or what it was initially designed for, which the idea is legitimate. The execution has been horrendous, right? So just imagine, right? Just imagine that you're a company that you have an idea, you have a product, you have a service that you want to bring into the market, but you don't have the funds to do so, right? So this is you, okay? This is you. You and your idea. For now, let's assume you is GameStop, right? And GameStop's been around for a while. It's a retail and, uh, um, you know, they, they sell games and products and services, I'm assuming, and stuff like this. And uh, they're focused on gaming, right? Now, just imagine you are a company that you're trying to raise money to continue your operation or you're trying to do placement to buy out another company or you're trying to raise money right to be able to restructure for the new times right for the new things happening in the markets for example if you're a retail space that had a lot of locations in a mall right before e-commerce kicked in maybe you need to raise some funds to be able to transition into an e-commerce world, right? So how does a company like you raise money, right? One of the things you could do, you could go privately, hit up some people you know, send out some, uh, some summaries of your work, right? And get people privately to invest in your company. And there are a lot of private placements, right? You don't have to go to Wall Street or stock market or different stock markets to raise money. You can go to different individuals, right? You could go to different in individuals, private, right? And get the money coming in, right? All the money comes in. You get the money you want and then you can expand your work, right? You go here and you expand or you start your project, right? You get the money coming in, you do it that way, right? What's your other choice? Instead of going private, you go to Wall Street. Okay, you go to Wall Street. <laughs> Hilarious. You go to Wall Street to get some money. When you go to Wall Street to get some money, there are certain things you can do, right? Now, even if you go to private to get your money, right? What you can do, you can take, let's say half your company and say you're giving shares of half your company to the people that you're, are investing in your company, right? Now, for a long time, the way a company, you, would be able to do this you would go to the banks right and the banks and the banks have a whole bunch of network set out there right they have a whole bunch of money people that they can take a certain percentage of the company that's trying to raise money right and sell those shares the banks sort of are the in-between people right they're the salesman they place you know the shares with these rich people and these rich people the money people right the uh the the funds some of them they buy a share of your company and you expand and do what you need to do right and this isn't just people who are starting new okay <laughs> This isn't just companies that are new. Thank you, Sheriff, for taking care of business. This isn't companies that are just new, right? Google does this. Apple does this, right? Facebook does this. They do secondary offerings. They do, they, they, whenever, like, for example, Apple did, I forget what it was, uh, a few years ago, right? They did a multi-billion dollar offering because they wanted the cash, right? And then they, what they did, 
if this is Apple, right? They took a little chunk of their company and they issued more shares and they brought in billions of dollars coming in, right? And what the company says they need that for, they say they need it for R&D, they need it for mergers and acquisitions, they need to stabilize their company, they need to expand, they need to do it for whatever reasons, right? So the concept of this is legit for you to have a place to go to to raise some money, right? Now, what's this dependent on? How much money you can raise? Well, if you're already in the market, right, and GameStop has been in the market for a number of years, you can raise a certain amount of money based on your stocks, based on your share price, right? So, for example, if your share price is $10, right, and you want to raise, let's say, a million dollars, right, or let's say $10 million, you want to raise $10 million, right? How many zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six. You want to raise $10 million, then what you do, you issue 1 million shares at $10, and usually you give the discount, right? If the stock is trading at $10, usually there's a percentage off that you say, hey, you know what? For the banks that are going to be finding us investors that are going to put money into the company, what we're going to do, we're going to give them a 15% discount or 20% discount, right? 15% less, right? So they get 15% discount from what the average share price has been for the last 90 days in general, last 30 days, depending on the different exchanges you're in, right? So you can sell your 1 million shares, right? Shares number number of shares less it's going to be a little bit more than 1 million shares because you're giving people a 15% discount right so you can sell offer right an additional share and what it, that does that dilutes the amount of shares you have in the market right so in general whenever you're doing this the stock price takes a little bit of a hit right and there is sort of restrictions you put on the shares you say okay we're issuing these shares but you can't sell your shares in the open market the next day because people would do that and right away if the share price is ten dollars they're getting a 15 percent discount they dump 1 million shares at ten dollars they automatically overnight or within a week they make 15 percent interest right which is pretty good deal right but usually they say you can't do that and all there's all these little rules and regulations that you can't do that right they say okay it's locked in for three months half of it is locked in for three months the other half you can sell after a year or something like this and they do this with their um, CEOs and managers and uh, board of directors and all that jazz too right now just imagine this if your ability to raise money in the open market is dependent on your share price, then your share price matters. Because if your share price is $10, then you only need to sell, dilute the shares by, dilute the outstanding shares by 1 million to raise $10 million. But if your share price is $2.50, and you want to raise 10 million dollars now you got to issue 4 million shares right this is important this is important right the share price matters which is something that you have to consider what's going on with GameStop because GameStop has been beaten down their share price has been shorted right now we'll get into that right but think about it this way the price of GameStop share has been beaten down so low that they would have to dilute the number of outstanding shares by a lot to be able to raise a significant amount of money that they would need to raise to be able to restructure their retail spaces to go online to be able to sell their products online and who would they be competing against well hell they'd be competing against amazon and the likes the giants right and it becomes more difficult to raise a substantial amount of capital to go against 
giants like Amazon and Walmart and Microsoft and all these Silicon Valley and they established the, the legacy companies right because they've been in the game for a long time and they got a lot of funds on the side right like Apple when they sold additional shares to make a few billion dollars they took all that money and put it in the bank and they gave it as dividends to the shareholders and they said they were doing R&D and stuff like that but if you look at Apple's um, cash on hand it's huge right a lot of that has to do with them continuously reissuing shares right and making more money now if your stock is being beaten down you're gonna have a hard time doing that right you're gonna have a hard time doing that keep that in mind this is very relevant to game stock I'm gonna take this down okay because we're gonna create a certain other talk about the shorting of shares right we're gonna keep the ten dollar there okay. now let's take this down let's take this down but you're still there okay now let's assume to a certain degree to a certain degree okay now let's assume this is you or your GameStop now I believe I can't remember how much outstanding shares there are in GameStop I think it's like 65 million shares or something but I'm, I'm not 100% sure right short I recognize this term the big short indeed now take a look at this let's assume this is you let's assume you have a million shares outstanding right number of shares number of shares right and I'm using a million because I've said this many times what are mathematicians what are mathematicians mathematicians are lazy right if you're trying to understand the mathematical concept of trying to do calculations come up with a model the easiest number to scale is one right so you're gonna see a lot of ones that's where the percentage comes from 100 right that's where the unit circle comes from in trigonometry with the radius of one right one is the easiest number to scale so we're gonna stick with let's say your company has 1 million shares right and let's assume your stock price is ten dollars okay now if you go into the markets depending on the different types of markets you are there are different regulations for different different markets out there right like the TSX in Canada has different regulations than uh, the Wall Street and Nasdaq then Canadian Exchange and the Germany and all these places are different regulations right and different regulations allow certain stocks certain companies to be played in a different way okay what are outstanding outstanding shares is how many shares a company has out in the market right so if you have a million shares in the market right and if you're a uh, what do you call it public company you're gonna basically assume 1 million shares represents a hundred percent of your company right so your company would be worth 10 million dollars 10 times 1 million if you have 1 million shares in the company outstanding circulating right worth ten dollars your company is worth ten million dollars right as the price of your stock goes up so goes the price of your company this is a simplistic version but just think about it this way okay that's what outstanding shares are how many shares are out in circulation for a company okay and companies every now and then buy back their own shares if the if they if you as a company have done really well you got a lot of cash in the bank right you want to kick up your share price you can decide to take five million dollars and buy back your own stock right and if the value of the company hasn't gone up or hasn't um, hasn't changed the book value on it and your business model hasn't changed if you buy back half a million shares your own your own company and if there's 1 million shares outstanding being traded what's going to happen with your price the price is going to go up and everything staying the same your price will go up to twenty dollars right if everything's the same right and you decide you need additional money 
right to do research and development to do uh, mergers and acquisitions to restructure then you can issue another million shares all of a sudden there's two million shares in the float and the stock price will come down right that's the way you can think about it now depending on the different types of exchanges you're on you can do different things with stocks on wall street right you gotta meet certain thresholds right on wall street there's the pink uh, pink sheets and all this jazz but game stock is on uh, on the new york stock exchange i believe or is it on nasdaq let me do a little check on this doink, da -da -ding -dong. Uh, it's on the new york stock exchange right so gamestop is on new york stock exchange and on new york stock exchange they're allowing for game stock shares to be shorted and shorted means this if you're a company out here you're this dude you're this dude right you're this dude okay and then let's assume this guy here says GameStop is a crappy company and I want to bet that the stock price is going to go down right and that's one thing you have to really appreciate with the stock market you can bet both ways you can bet the stock price is going to go down or you can bet that it's going to go up right a lot of people retail investors usually bet that the price is going to go up because they don't have the ability to do the other games right so can I issue as many shares as I want what determines how many outstanding shares I can have uh, the board of directors right the board of directors can come out and say okay we need to raise money right and we've done really well so stock price is up we want to issue another million shares and this is the reason we want to issue it usually you know you have to say why you want to issue it you want to say oh you want to give bonuses to all the CEOs the board of directors well what do you think is gonna happen with the stock price the stock price is gonna plummet right because people are gonna go what a stupid reason to dilute the number of shares because if you increase the number of shares by an additional million then the value of it comes down right think of it as a collectible right action comics number one last time I checked a couple of years ago two three years ago sold for three million dollars 3.2 million dollars because there's a certain number of action comics number one at a certain grade that are rare they're collectible right what would happen if all of a sudden in somebody's basement they found a thousand action comic number ones in mint condition well the person that bought action comics number one at it was i think it was graded 9.0 that paid three two three point two million dollars well the price of that is going to come down now because there's a lot more of them available right i like the collectibles analogy yeah indeed all right like cryptocurrencies bitcoin you can think about it as a collectible and it is right is it, it it's a digital collectible now okay so your stock price is ten dollars this guy over here let's do this guy in red right? this guy over here says i'm willing to bet that game stock or your company is going to go down the toilet right and because game stock is being traded on new york stock exchange new york stock exchange allows something called short selling on certain types of stocks that meet their criteria and GameStop does and your company does right and short selling says this even though this guy in red right doesn't have any of your 1 million shares he's allowed to sell imaginary shares on the market <laughs> right borrowed shares on the market at ten dollars so all of a sudden your float is no longer one million your float is more than a million but the short shares are imaginary shares right and game stock the number of shorts of game stock stock were 100 estimates or 100 to 140 percent of the number of shares outstanding so this guy here right and the short play on GameStop wasn't one person there was multiple people involved in it right multiple powerful people involved in it but they're still being fed to the dogs some of them they should be right but 
the main players are still in the background, right? So this guy says, you know what? I'm gonna short, I'm gonna sell your company's shares, GameStop shares on the open market, but they're not shares I have, they're imaginary shares. They're borrowed shares that I'm gonna sell on the market. And estimates are anywhere between 100 to 140% of the outstanding shares of GameStop were shorted. Let's assume we're doing 100. What are mathematicians? Mathematicians are lazy. We want to deal with ones. Ones are easily scalable. So this guy ends up selling 1 million shares, imaginary shares of GameStop on the open market over an extended period of time. Now, if you look at the chart, it's like a slow downgrade, right? So they keep on shorting it, buying back, shorting it, buying back, covering the short, buying back, buying back, riding it down, pressing it down. Just imagine a boot on your face holding you down, right? What's going to happen to the stock price? Well, the stock price is not going to do well, right? The stock price is going to come down. Stock price over time is going to come down. Let's assume it goes down to 250. Right. Nikki, small thought feels like a dumb question. If you start a company and you want to take take it public, how many shares do you uh, do you uh, do you have to pay with before you issue them out to the public? I.e., what determines the number of shares your company gets? It it's up to the board of directors, the people that own the company, to decide how many shares they're gonna put out there right and it's a discussion that they have with the banks and it's also a discussion of how much the company is worth and how much of the company they're going to put in the open market right like for example you don't have to put a hundred percent of your company into the open market right uh, or put the shares out available to the public the owners of the company right so here's another company they can decide to put 25% of the shares of, of the company, value of the company, available to the public to be bought, and the rest of it is insiders. Insiders own the rest of it, right? 75% of the company, right? So basically what happens is, if this company ends up making $100 profit in a year, the 25%, $25 of that, right? Could be paid back as dividends to the shareholders because that's in the public hands and the other 75 percent or 75 dollars goes to the insiders okay not the determination of how many shares will be issued but how many exist period how many exist period again it's up to the company owners and it's really dependent on what the share price will be and what the value of the company is right you go to the banks and you decide you know they look at your company and they say your company's worth <laughs> let's stick with the number one your company's worth 10 million dollars right before you go on the public right you haven't you're thinking about talking about the talking with the banks and all this stuff decide trying to decide how many shares you're going to put out there right you go to the banks you say they do an assessment they say your company's worth 10 million dollars right that's what you're assessed at and they ask you as a company owner how much of the company do you want to put on the open market you say i want to put 50 percent of the company on the open market foolish thing to do if you really want to retain control of your company but let's say it's 50 percent and you can you can classify the shares as different types of shares class a uh, class one two three a b c or whatever it is right sometimes the shareholders don't have a say in the operations of the company sometimes they do right so let's say you want to put 50 percent of your company on the open market and your company's worth 10 million dollars well then the bank's going to say or you're going to ask the bank what should we price the company shares at per share well the bank says you know what let's price the shares at one dollar each if they're one dollar each then you're going to issue uh five million shares oops right or they could say you know what let's go for the high-end investor 
let's price the shares at ten dollars a pop then you're not going to issue five million shares you're going to issue five hundred thousand shares right to be worth five million dollars right it really it's it's, it's it's a game it's a game and from those 500,000 shares what do the banks get out of it well they take a cut of the shares right the banks the people who are doing this placement for selling 500,000 shares at ten dollars they make a deal with the with the company and they take maybe 50,000 shares and they actually only sell 450,000 shares to the public right that's their kickback okay if they're selling imaginary shares why does it have any effect on the real stock price do people not know the difference uh, we'll get into a think gotcha i got the calculations of shares to worth i was just confused on the process of pricing the initial shares thank you for my pleasure my pleasure as for tink take a look at this all right let's take this down let's take this down right. so these guys are shorting a million shares now uh tink there are no 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 worries uh nikki there whenever i teach anything in general right uh most of the time it's good to have questions coming in because if there's any confusion taking place if anything haven't stipulated correctly uh, or if i make any mistakes and correct me if i make have any brain farts it's good to have the feedback uh absurdicon is very informative awesome now check this out regarding tink's question shorting of shares you can go on different exchanges and figure out how many shares are shorted and how many shares are outstanding so if you go to and by the way that's what uh someone here linked up that one of the places that you you used to go to to be able to see how many of these imaginary shares were out there has decided not to list these imaginary shares anymore well, what so they're not even going to start providing you the information of how many imaginary shares people have sold and the way shorting stocks works is this okay let me explain that to you it answers my initial question soon cool cool now take a look at this how does shorting work now shorting is basically a, a company a person and hedge fund whoever it is or a collective of people deciding to share to borrow shares right and borrowing shares means this let me kill this for now okay let's assume the stock price is ten dollars right and this guy shorts a million shares of this company at ten dollars right and let's say the stock price goes down to five dollars what this guy can do because when you sell these imaginary shares you actually have to pay back the shares at some point right you can borrow the money to do it right and shorting stocks is not as easy as me and you going and saying oh i want to short the stock before you short a stock the uh, exchanges that you're dealing with the companies that you're dealing with the banks that you're dealing with are going to look at the value of this guy uh oh but no chicho don't say my phone name again <laughs> been too long following on youtube also <laughs> now this guy is worth money if he's able to sh short a million shares of a company at ten dollars the guy's got cash sitting on the background and he better right because what happens is if me and you if anybody buys a stock at ten dollars and the company goes belly up the most you can lose is ten dollars right but if i decide to short the stock sell this stock at ten dollars and hope that it's going to go down for me to buy it back at five dollars that means i made a five dollar profit if it goes the other way i might lose a lot more right greetings blessings dr p so this guy the only way he's allowed to short stocks is because he's full of dough right you can you can say he's full of something else as well but he's full of dough 
he's got a lot of money and the banks have looked at this how much money how much net worth this guy has and he has to have multiple uh, way more net worth than what the value of the short is because if he shorts a million shares at ten dollars that means he's borrowed ten million dollars worth of shares and sold them to generate ten million dollars right but if he starts his bet goes the wrong way he might have to pay back a lot more than that if the stock price ends up going the other way let's say it goes to fifteen dollars right so if this guy shorts the stock at ten dollars right and the stock goes down to five dollars this differential here when he buys back this stock because he still has to fulfill the contract he's borrowed these imaginary shares sold them and at some point at the brokerage house is going to say okay we need to have those stocks bought back now if he sells it at ten dollars and buys it back at five he just made oops i need more room i need six zeros he's just made five million dollars profit right right however if the stock goes the other way right if the stock goes the other way he has to if he sold the shares at ten dollars and buys them back at fifteen dollars he has to buy them back at fifteen dollars then he's lost five million dollars right positive made it negative that's what it means when you're betting uh for a company to go down okay sleepy waves how you doing the real mc hey nikki not a dumb question at all okay i'm gonna skip uh discussion between each other right uh you'll probably have to solve proper yeah so that's what happens that's what shorting is and remember the people shorting a stock are worth a lot of money because if this stock if you've bought it and the stock goes down to zero you've only lost if you had a million shares you only lost 10 million dollars if this stock price instead of going to 15 dollars goes to 150 dollars this guy didn't lose negative didn't lose 5 million they lost 50 million right 50 million no 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 not 50 million what am i saying i did the multiple wrong if it goes to if it goes to 150 dollars they sold it at 10 dollars and they have to now buy it back at 150 dollars they just lost 140 million dollars instead of 10 million dollars is that correct that we do it right I think so right huge difference huge difference right short uh, strategy ever be used in investment portfolios for people with normal income or too risky you can use you can you can play the long and short game by the options way and when you buy options you can buy puts betting that a stock is going to go down or you can buy calls betting that a stock is going to go up right but your uh, uh your risk of losing money is limited to how much the options were worth okay okay better than me hold hold the g jokes noise right so huge difference huge difference now are you willing to bet 10 million dollars right trying to make 10 million dollars and in a week or two weeks or two months all of a sudden you lose control of the the game and the stock price goes up to 150 dollars all of a sudden you sold some shares at 10 dollars to generate 10 million dollars all of a sudden now you need to buy back the same number of shares at 150 dollars and you're gonna lose 140 million dollars oh snap well that's what's going on with the GameStop right and 
keep this in mind this is something that has occurred for a long time in in Wall Street there's a lot of companies that have been shorted to oblivion right and keep in mind what we talked about initially once a company is under pressure from these big fund managers being stomped on it prevents a company from doing secondary offerings or re-offerings of stock selling the stock to generate money so they can restructure so they can have a future right it prevents them from doing that because they're under serious pressure right it's not the free market it's sort of a game on the side that's taking place okay you only lose the premium so you cap your losses with puts yeah absurdicon so gamestop was being shorted hedge funds expected the price to drop but then reddit stepped in and everyone started buying gme so the price went way up which means that now the hedge funds are going to have to pay back a ton of money right yes but this is the way it works take a look at this thing it's not just one hedge fund that shorted gamestop right there are multiple hedge funds that shorted gamestop let's say this guy is a smaller player here let's do a do a visual and here's let's take out these two guys and replace them with a bunch of little or guys right little or guys this is important by the way because i'm about to explain to you what a short squeeze is and how it works here's a bunch of little guys little dudes because what you're going to find out in wall street in our current economic system is a lot of people that me and you talk to the little fund manager and stuff like that majority of them don't know <laughs> they couldn't I'm, I'm going to be nice they're not the best informed people in the world right they only do what they've been told or they or they parrot what the big boys are doing right what the big boys are doing so this big boy gets a short position let's say of a million shares in this company right now gamestop had about 140 percent of the actual outstanding shares shorted so let's assume there is another 400,000 shares, right? Shorted by the little players, right? Now, why did the little players short GameStop? Most likely because they saw this big boy shorting a million shares and they said, we want a piece of the action. So they shorted 400,000 of the GameStop stock right or 40 percent of it this is a hundred percent of the original outstanding shares and this is another 40 percent of the original outstanding shares now since these little guys are littler right smaller players they don't have as much uh credit as the big player right so their margin calls came in and margin calls are basically banks calling up a player right who's got money in the game saying listen uh we can't give you any additional line of credit you have to cover your short so if this guy here or this poor little bastard right <laughs> this, this guy here right shorted let's say fifty thousand shares right at ten dollars and the stock price went up to twenty dollars right he's going to get a little phone call from the bank saying hey you don't have enough funds to cover the buyback on twenty dollars if this thing goes up another five your net worth is not enough to be able to buy back your shares you have to buy back your shares right so all of a sudden this guy has to take the hit they need to buy back 50,000 shares right because the price the stock price is getting away from them right so what's going to happen is all of a sudden there's going to be a buy order of 50,000 shares at $20 coming in because this guy needs to cover 
the initial bet that he made. Holy camoles, this stock price is not going to do a nice little thing like this. It's going to go like this. Boom. All of a sudden, there's 40,000 or 50,000 buy of a stock price, right? So what happens when it goes up here, the price might jump up to $30, all right? So the price jumps up to $30. Oh, look, there's another poor bastard <laughs> that's here. He was, he, wasn't, he was expecting this thing to go down. Now the price is at $30. This guy gets the next call from the bank. The bank says, hey, buddy, you have another 50,000. Let's say this guy bought another 50,000 shares uh, short of 50,000 shares at $10, their net worth is the equivalent of the stock price being worth $35 or $40. Usually the margin you're allowed to play with is anywhere between 25 to 75% of your net worth, usually 50%, right? Once you cross that threshold, you're going to get a call from the bank saying you got to liquidate some of your assets because you're going to, you're going to have the margin there to cover your losses so this guy this this next person on the line gets another call from the bank saying okay you're gonna have to buy back the amount of shares that you shorted because your net worth is not enough to cover this if this guy this thing goes up anymore right so there's another short squeeze coming in all of a sudden woof, another 50,000 shares at $30 woof, right and the higher the price the larger the movements if there's big blocks being bought like this all of a sudden this guy goes up to sixty dollars oh guess what the next dominoes fall boom 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 the stock price goes from 20 30 60 150 320 dollars all of a sudden this big boy gets a phone call this big boy gets a phone call from the bank hey big boy you shorted a million shares at ten dollars that was worth ten million dollars now you have to cover this short game stock price went up to breached 400 game stock price went up to i think right now today is trading at around 320 dollars 320 dollars the guy shorted a million shares at ten dollars has to cover has to buy back the shares at 320 dollars that means he has to pay the difference which is 310 dollars a million shares he have to he has to cough up 310 million dollars and a million shares what's that going to do to the stock price when it's sitting at 320 dollars where is it going to go there's only a million shares outstanding this guy needs to buy back a million shares where is he going to buy it back from if people are as the mantra is going holding the line and not selling their shares oh snap crackle pop the share price is going to go i don't know where is it going to go my board is not big enough right that's the game at play right now now is it everything that everybody's saying hold the line on all this uh, not really right this is the simplified version but one thing you have to consider and apologies if i'm not reading the chat okay but this is the game at play right now me and you don't get to print money right me and you don't have access to zero percent interest as much as we want right we can't go to the bank and say hey i need to i need a 310 million dollars a zero percent interest so i can buy back the one million imaginary shares i sold of this company because there's a whole bunch of retail investors that are screwing me over the game is rigged well the game was rigged from the get-go because this guy knows how it was rigged he's just really pissed because everybody else knows figured out how the game is rigged and how it's played right but these people here, right? This guy here that's being thrown to the wolves, this big boy here, he's a big boy relative to me and you. He's not a big boy relative to the banks, right? To the people behind the curtain because they're the ones pressing the buttons and letting the money flow, 
right? If you look at the M1 and M2 of Federal Reserve funds that were released, right? The chart, approximately 40% of all cash, liquid cash, that has ever been released by the Federal Reserve was released, was created in 2020, in the last year. So 40% of all the money in the in that the Federal Reserve had ever released onto the markets were created in the last year, right? And if you want to know how it was created, well, in the last few months, Wall Street was given a bailout of trillions of dollars while people in the United States, some of them didn't even get their $600 paycheck and they're going to be waiting months to even, if they can, get a hundred uh four fourteen hundred dollar paycheck so wall street gets the funds first at zero percent interest no questions asked within days if not hours of them asking for it and joe below investor not the same not the same so this guy can decide maybe if the market allows it to short another million shares and push it down again push it down again push it down again right and if the line of communication this is extremely important right send soar ship apologies if i spell things wrong but looking at it this way is harder right if the line of communication because this is a war right the first thing you do in any war is to cut the lines of communication of your adversary right if the line of communication is severed between the retail investors acting as a cooperative to take on these big boys right if the line of communication is severed between all these different factions all these different people that are working together as a cooperative and this is one of the greatest examples of a cooperative that i can think of people working together to get something done right if the lines of communication are severed and there's panic selling right and people are freaking out well guess what if this guy can get the funds that he needs plus some to continue to short the shares at 320 dollars and there's panic selling from the retail investors because they can't communicate with each other then now he's not shorting a million shares at ten dollars he's now shorting another million shares at 320 dollars and if this thing goes down this big boy is getting bigger he's going to make more mint money right because we don't know what access to funds this guy has now what's been going on is discord took out the line of communication for wall street bets the people who have and vested interest in this they put their hard-earned money to play this game right and it is a game right so discord severed the line of communication reddit to a certain degree took up the line of communication for a short period during a crucial crucial time if you're in a war zone situation if there's an attack on your front lines and your line of communication is severed for a few minutes to a few hours that could be extremely devastating right you could lose the war at least the battle because this isn't the war is much bigger than just this this is just one battle right you could lose that battle so reddit took it out what else happened oh wow some of these places like robin hood that people had their shares prevented people from selling or not selling buying more of the shares to keep the price going up so this big boy could get right so robin hood and other apps prevented people from buying more shares because they wanted a piece of the action they did the calculation if this guy has to buy back a million shares at 320 dollars price of gamestop is going to go through the roof holy shite it's going to go into the thousands of dollars right but you couldn't buy it not only that these apps these websites started selling people's shares without their knowledge what the f why would they start selling shit they they sold people's shares without them knowing it right 
without them wanting their sh uh, share sold right so this is just on the front lines of what's going on there is a uh, so much other things going on in the background right which is if you look into this thing it goes into what we just talked about at the beginning which is the veils being lifted people are realizing that this is a rigged game and these big boys these even these guys might seem like big boys to us they might be controlling billions of dollars right but they're nobody they're nobody is that a big boy nobody nobody if we've heard their names right they're nobodies they're not the ones pressing the button and increasing the money supply by 40 percent in one year right side 100 percent side a side b the mask is off what is the game what's going on right that's my little quick intro there is a lot more to this i skipped over a few things just answering some questions or whatnot but it should give you a really good appreciation of what just took place what is taking place right and the implications of this are grand or beautiful or are phenomenal this should kick us into occupy wall street two three four ten amplified right because our enemy is not me and you no matter what our ideology ideology beliefs religions the different foods we eat the different the different color of our skin right we're not each other's enemy right occupy wall street had it right who is the enemy because our differences didn't matter when robin hood was selling our shares or prevented us from buying shares right or censored our communication we're all the same keep your eyes on the prize know what the game is decide if you want to participate in this game and realize there's a lot of different markets that you can enter that are disruptive that don't give as much power to this bad boy and his minions and his masters okay and that's my little intro to what just took place fun <laughs>